I'm Shamara here from Fluid Speak ESL. Just dropping in really quickly to offer you a few quick conversation tips. We're gonna be talking about three of them. The great thing about these conversation tips that I'll share with you is they're very easy to use no matter what level you're at of your English language learning. Something to note about the conversation tips that I offer both in this video as well as in my program is that when we use these tips, we're really trying to build relationships. That's the key element in the conversation strategies that I have to offer. But let's get into these three quick tips, okay? Here we go. So tip number one is a little strategy that I like to call latching. Just get this visual, latching. What latching means exactly is pretty much to hold on to something or grasp on to something. So the way this tip goes in a conversation with somebody, listen actively, carefully for something, anything that the person has to say that connects to you. It might connect to you because you have it in common or it might connect to you because you are also interested in something that they said. Again, it could be like they mentioned they have a pet, you also have a pet. They mentioned that they're new at the company, maybe they've only been at the company for one week, and you also are fairly new, you've only been at the company for like one month. Find something, anything that you can connect to that person on. Now, in this latching, you might decide to latch and apply. And if you do, that means you use it right away. As soon as you find something to connect to, you mention it right away. You share it right away. This is something that you can do. It lets the person know upfront and quickly that you've got something in common. That's good. But you might decide instead to latch and save it for later. This is great too. Let me explain why. It might actually be even better to latch and save it for later. When you bring this up in another conversation in the future, that person will probably be surprised that you could remember something that they said to you a week ago, a month ago, maybe even a few months ago. That's a little bit more impressive. So again, if some of the goals through making conversations in English is to build relationships, this is really helpful. You're showing them that you have something in common and you're connected to them in some way, but you're also showing them, if you decide to save it, that you can remember interesting information about them, even when they're not right in front of you. That's pretty good. All right, tip number two. Number two is Converse, don't interview. You might be familiar with what we call closed-ended questions and open-ended questions. People are usually encouraged to use open-ended questions when you're trying to learn more about the person. Open-ended questions are more likely to get more information from the person and it's more likely also to make the other person talk more that's why we use open-ended questions in interviews for example are you interested in working here that's a closed-ended question because the answer can pretty much only be yes or no with closed-ended the responses are pretty fixed they're pretty set compare that to why do you want to work here? Who knows what the answer could be? So you see, these open-ended questions, they are great for conversation, but remember, it's not an interview, it's a conversation. So please don't forget about the closed-ended questions because they're good for balance. You need some balance. If a conversation is full of open-ended questions, then you know what? It's too busy and there's too much work to do to answer all of the questions. And a conversation shouldn't feel like work. It should feel enjoyable, right? So find a balance there and don't forget about closed-ended questions. They're good too. 
Now, right about now, you might be feeling a little bit nervous because closed-ended questions, yes, they sometimes leave a little bit of open space and silence in the conversation because the answers might be shorter. You might worry about this a little bit, but that brings us to tip number three. Don't be afraid of the silence. Try to just use it. Here's how. So a lot of times we feel the need to fill every space in the conversation with words because we feel nervous, anxious, and uncomfortable. This is a habit, a nervous habit that many people have, not just language learners, okay? But try to sit with the silence a little bit. Sometimes it's better to have silent moments in a conversation especially if it's a serious conversation. And they just made a very interesting, deep point. Give that point some time to sit and just listen, think about it, appreciate it. Also, while things are silent, don't forget about your hands and your face, your whole body. You can still be reacting. Maybe you were already nodding. Try slowing down your gestures. Sometimes we do this when things get really interesting in a conversation. In addition to nodding, sometimes we might change the position of our body. We might turn to them a little bit more. We might move closer. We might move further back. There are different things that we can do to have our body help us to communicate. And you can be doing all this while you are silent while the conversation is silent. And you know what? These gestures can still make it look like you are interested and engaged. That might even make the other person want to continue talking because you look so engaged. Isn't that a good way to show someone else that you value what they have to say and that you're interested in what they have to say? Remember, all these tips are trying to go back to the main goal of building that relationship through that conversation, even a short conversation. Everybody, I hope that these tips were helpful for you today. Again, they're pretty easy to apply. If you're not ready to apply them in English, start by trying to apply them in your own language first, at home, at work. See how it feels to apply these tips. As you get more comfortable with that, Take the next step. Start to apply them in your English conversations when you get to that step. Remember, that's why we're here. Feel free to reach out to us at Fluid Speak ESL. I'd love to help you through these tips one-on-one -on -one, and several more, of course. Bye. Thanks for watching.